All right, we're going to highlight Kenny today because he's always here and he's looking at the rates every single morning. Uh, welcome to Randy Bird, Birdhouse Coaching, Monday Morning Mojo, Monday Mojo, Monday Coaching. Got about thousand names, but we're here every single Monday at noon and we talk about what's going on in the real estate space and we um, look at all things like that. So Kenny, what are the rates today? 7.12, trending in the right direction. Trending the right direction is the right way to say that. And the, where we find them is an app called Mortgage News Daily. Looks like that, Mortgage News Daily, and it's free. And uh, I love it because I'm able to look at it every week and keeps me in touch with the market. If I was actively selling, I'd be looking at it every day like Kenny does. But thanks for always bringing the rates to the table. The first thing in, uh, at the beginning of the call, I appreciate that. What, what were the high watermark of the rates in the last 90 days? 7.81. Yeah, 7.81. So they almost hit the 8% ceiling again. And uh, now they're down almost to seven. I suspect that we're trending the right way. We'll probably start seeing those get below seven. And then there's also communication right now with the feds that they're going to lower rates. I think we're looking at a June adjustment. I personally think it will be a 0.5 or 50 basis points, it's called. And that will get us down around 6.5, 6.6. That's a big deal. Uh, if we can get down to that rate, I think it will inspire buyers and sellers. And then if it ever goes below six again, it's going to be just a hayride, right? That's, we just know that's going to happen. If we can get the rates to get down into the sixes again, then we'll be back into uh, the multiple offers and it's just going to happen. But they understand that they're going to lower them slowly, in my humble opinion, because uh, we could disrupt the market just as easily by getting them in, let's say, four and a half percent again we'd crash the market again, right? We'd make rate, we'd make values go up super inflated. We have multiple offers over a hundred thousand dollars and all these things, right? You know, what's really hot right now that I'm doing personally is uh, assuming loans. Uh, there's VA assumptions. If you're a military guy, I didn't know it, but you can assume a VA loan without being military. I don't know how that's possible, but somebody told me you could recently that I respect look into it. The vet has to give up their ability to, to do a VA loan going forward if they allow somebody to assume it. Oh, is that what it is? So it yes, doesn't. Yes, they give up their 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 VA. Uh, if it's a non-vet, if it's a non-vet that takes it, then they're that makes tied sense. up. They're tied up in that loan until that person refinances. Thank you for clarifying. It. That makes sense. So right now we we've got two places we're looking at that have um, sub three percent fixed thirty year loans, and they're willing to. Uh, do a VA, um, you know, seller assign basically assumption of that. And I know somebody recently in your market, actually, that just bought a house for 2.25 fixed and uh, it's a second home. So pretty amazing. There's some opportunities there. So you can give the seller uh, their sales price, maybe inflated or not, but you get that rate, right? And uh, really popular commercial broker I just talked to said, you could have one of two things. You could have a pre-COVID price with uh, with a, a post-COVID rate, or you could have a post-COVID price with a pre-COVID rate. And I was like, that's really brilliant, right? He's selling mini storages and stuff. And he's like, yeah, we'll give you your 900 grand when it was 600,000 in 2020, but we want a two and a half percent rate if we're going to do sell or carry. Or you could be more negotiable on your price and we'll give you that five, six, 7%, whatever it is. Right. So I thought that was pretty powerful. So he's like, which, which one do you want? Do you want the rate or do you want the price? Right. Cause everybody's got different motivations. So I really dig that. Let me check chat real quick, just so I could be uh, good there. No problem. Perfect. Love it. Thank you for putting in the mortgage news daily. So here's what's going on in, in the world of real estate in, in Randy Bird's opinion, which means nothing more than this call if you choose to uh, listen to it or otherwise. The market is kind of hiccuping along. We have one side of town is very busy and a lot of activity. The other side of town, in my case, it's I-5, but it's really not a north and south, east and west. It just happens to be that side of town is a little more popular and the other side of town is a little more country and and, you know, in my particular geographical area, but we're seeing a lot of homes sitting on the market still. And then we're seeing inventory creeping up. So with that and talking about like a global footprint, because I'm dealing with coaching clients all over the United States, 
we're seeing the same things. It's summer seasons here. It's a little more active, but there's a lot more inventory. And I just got back from Arizona where we're looking at properties in Surprise and in uh, Scottsdale and in Peoria and those areas. There's a lot of inventory. In one subdivision, there was 84 homes available for sale. And the subdivision has about 1,500 houses, maybe 1,100 houses. That's a lot of signs in the yards. Like literally we're driving down every street, had a sign, two signs, four signs on, on each block. And I'm a buyer, right? I'm a seller in Oregon. I'm going to keep it now, but I'm a buyer in Arizona. And the buyer's perspective is, it was interesting as a 21 year real estate veteran, um, veteran as in 21 years in the business, I'm a veteran as well, but you get where I'm going. I was putting on my buyer's hat and I was like, what are they thinking at that price? Or, hey, they didn't do this. They, I was very picky because there's so much inventory. Where I remember looking probably six months ago when we were starting to venture, we were looking in everywhere from Puerto Rico, no inventory, to Arizona, no inventory a year ago, right? All of a sudden it was like, holy moly, that's a cool house. I don't, I don't care if there's a pool or not. I can put that in, right? Buyer sentiment changes. So now we found a great house a BA carry for 2.25 or 2.5. It was very low, but they're overinflated on their price and it doesn't have a pool. That's a big thing for us. I don't want to spend a hundred on a pool. I want somebody else to lose the money on putting the pool in, right? And I was looking at it and I was like, nope, not interested. They're like, well, let's counter. And I'm like, not interested, All right? There's just a lot of inventory. So this could be going through the eyes of your buyers as well, Right? And Sonia said, I do believe the veteran only gives a proportion of their entire month if the loan is assumed. Often a technicality depending on the price of the market. I don't know the exact term for all that and, and the exact language. I'm not a lender, so I'm not going to comment on that. But yeah, there, there is some opportunities to assume loans and even uh, military VA loans could be assumed potentially. There might be um, limitations for the, the seller for their next VA opportunity and so on. You can carry more than one VA loan at a time now. They allow, allow second homes, which is a new thing from when I first used my VA loan. Um, but when we look at what's going on in the market, in my opinion, again, I always preface that because it's my opinion. I think the market is still kind of hiccuping along. There's areas with good inventory. There's areas with uh, excessive inventory. There's areas that are having a lot of appreciation. Reading is a good example that bucks the trend. Inventory is very low, very, very low. It got named one of the best places to move in the nation for appreciation, for recreational activities, all the things, right? Reading and Chico led the whole nation in foreclosures, and then they led the nation in the recovery percentage of valuation. At one time they had, uh, I think it was like 40% of all the homes were in foreclosure or short sale status back in 2008, 9, 10. And then uh, we led the nation in appreciation with over 25% a year for like two or three years. So those markets are um, susceptible. Sacramento is another market that's similar like that. And so in Reading, very, very tight inventory. So the prices are still inflated. The, the activity and the uh, amount of uh, competitiveness in that market is still very high. And the amount of agents is growing a little bit. So when I was in that market, I remember we had 2000 average active listings. And now I think they have 330 or something like that. I mean, that's a, that's a low number. And so when you add these pieces and components to it, very difficult to get listings. Listings are king. Buyers are frustrated. And there's a lot of agents buying for those few customers. So that's a, that's a totally different market than maybe what we're seeing in Arizona, for instance, right? So it is a little geographical confined. So for me, it's, it's again, it depends on what side of the fence I'm on. If I'm talking to a seller and I'm in my particular area of Oregon, I'm saying you don't want your, your house to be a dog. We want to make sure we get it in activity in the first month. If you overprice it and you start losing interest in activity, then that is going to turn into chasing it down to the bottom. And I've always had some numbers that I've used in my whole career. I think they're more important than ever. And you can write these down if you're listening to the recording or not. 
if if you list a house and in the first couple of weeks, a 30 day window for sure, if you haven't had any offers, you missed the mark by five to 7%, could be more, could be 10%. But if you haven't had any offers whatsoever, you missed the mark. You've got to be aggressive in, in adjusting that. If you're getting a lot of showings and no offers, then that might be three to 5%. If you're getting no showings, it's definitely up in the 7% range, right? So no showings, no offers, five to 7%. One, two, three showings, it might be 7%. 10 showings, no offers, it might be 5%. But if you miss it by as little as three to 5% now, you could be sitting on the market. And as agents, we want the best for our clients. They want the most for it. They love their home the most. So many times we can miss it by this fairly small percentage points and really be sitting on a house for a while. I talked to a, a good buddy I respect a lot in Vegas. And he says he has eight listings. And for the last two months, there was zero activity. Like they had no showings for weeks, none on all eight. And then in the last three weeks, because I was in Vegas three weeks ago when I was talking to him two and a half weeks ago, he said, all of a sudden, everything just popped. It was like the sun came out and everything just popped. And so every home was getting showings. Every home was active. We got multiple offers on things. And this all happened literally in the course of a Monday through Friday, Monday to Friday, the whole thing changed. Right. So we've got to be really conscious about looking at the inventory, looking about what we're doing in our markets and watching those trends. It's really, really important now. When I was in production full-time, early early parts of my career especially, I was in the office every day at seven. I was looking at rates. I was familiarizing myself with what's going on in the, in the lending space. And then I knew the MLS is good or better than anybody. I could tell you at any time how many active, how many pending, how many sold, how many canceled, how many withdrawn, how many expired. I was working expired. I was working for sale by owners. I knew my numbers as good as anybody in town. And that was my claim to fame. And I, I coach and talk about this a lot because I believe that's the holy grail to what we're doing. So I'm not going to put you on the spot right now, but if you're looking at me right now, or if you're listening to this later, how many active listings are in your market? How many pendings have gone pending over the weekend? 700. Yeah, good job for knowing your number. 700 and what? 1.35 1, 1. months of inventory. I love it. So 700 and what? What's that? How 700 and what is it 700 I it was, exactly? I think it was 702 last time I checked. Okay, good job. I was just messing with you. I know. <laughs> but you see my point? You're going to you're going to have a tactical advantage when you're talking to people when you say there's 702 active listings and over the weekend we only put about 80 80 homes into escrow. That's only 11%. That's not very many. Right? That means that we're we have a little bit of glut or whatever the whatever the story is right and still tight as can be here yeah i thought it was tight in sacramento sacramento got named two three or four in the i think it was in the top i know it was in the top 10 for affordability in the nation and then it's also just a tight market you know it's a it's a really tight market so what 37 27 what's that 31 27 what's that kenny in the Galt market, there's 8,645 existing single family residences. There's 31 on the market right now, including six new ones from last week, 27 total pendings Holy right moly. now, including including only two from last week. Holy 50, moly, that's tight. 55 total closed sales with a floating 90 day average of about 543. Holy ah. moly. What's how much inventory is your what's your saturation? How long? It's 40 days. How long is it taking to sell them? Depends on the price range. Okay, but average, I always go off average sales price. So be, call it 40 days. Okay, okay, 40 days is tight. 40 yeah. days is tight. But it's 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 funny though. If it's under 500, they go pending in like five or six days. Yeah, it's in, because it's over, there's so many buyers in that yeah. price point that there's no there's no inventory that's going to hold up yeah. that time. You have, the, you have the whole number, but then there's two stories to that whole number. I love the fact that you guys know your numbers so well. I'd like to, I'd like to say that's a little bit from our coaching and our talking and our time together. Um, but that, I'm really impressed by that. I'm really impressed by that. It's so much easier to have a conversation with people when you can speak with facts. A hundred percent. Because they've all the got way, their opinion about what's happening. And then when, you know, the market's this, the market's that. And you go, well, actually... 
that that's the exactly numbers say right. this and, and it, you know it's indisputable it's what it is what i love and thank you for that patrick what i loved is when i was on listing appointments have you talked to other agents yeah we've talked to one or two okay awesome what did they say about inventory like how many active properties are on the market and they go they said it's like six to eight hundred i go it's 703 what they say about uh how many pendings or like how many houses are selling in our market and they just said it's really tight right now or there's a lot of houses for sale or something and i'm like it's 47 since friday and it's 120 you know what i mean just you're just knocking off numbers left and right this indisputable you're showing them up all of a sudden you discredit the other agents without saying a bad word right and i don't mind saying hey the agent you talk to is misinformed I don't know where they're getting their data, but it's old. It's not today's data. Matter of fact, it's it's really kind of uh, inaccurate data. They usually don't know what to do with the data either once they have it. No, they don't. And, you know, let's be honest, not, not everybody's in a coaching platform, either with the broker or with the team leader or through the training or whatever they're going over this. When I owned a Keller Williams office, this is all I did every week in my morning meeting is say exactly what's going on in the market because I know the importance of it. And- I didn't know it when I joined, but I joined the number one agent in town. That was, that's all I cared about was what's going on in the market, right? Being the expert in it. I love it. Well, what questions do you guys have for me today that I could support you on or help on? I have a question about the interest rates and, you know, we, the narrative we've had when we're talking to clients over the last 18 months is that interest rate rates cuts are coming. And of course, they haven't, and then they haven't, and then they yep. haven't, and then they haven't. And I was thinking about it, and it was like, I, I think that possibly this narrative we've been creative is is making people wait rather than act. 100% agree. And so to me, I, I've kind of thought about shifting my perspective and just say, hey, you know, through the through the 80s and 90s, we saw rates, you know, kind of float around 8, 9, 10% for, you know, a long time. And so, I mean, I, you know, everybody's saying they're going to go down, but the real, you know, what we've seen so far is that they've remained relatively stable. We're not going up much anymore. The question is a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, if the rates are the same and you spent three years living where you're currently at, you're telling me you want to move. Do you want to give up that time of your life and the memories, your kids, everything else, because you're waiting to play the interest rate game? You know, rates may go down. You can re refi later, but they may just be the same and you're just stuck where you're at waiting. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's where I was going when you started your story. I personally don't like going into, well, the rates were at 19% in 1984. And so mm -hmm. comparatively, they're so much better. They, they were also 2.25 two years or three years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't focus on that. What I focus on is the home situation. I focus on why are they talking about moving? Why are they talking about selling? Why are they doing all that? And then get into the numbers of it. Yeah. If somebody is selling a, a house that's at 500,000 and at 2.25, and they're trying to move into another area that's 500,000 at 7%, that sucks. Yeah. Right. We're looking at that. It's, it's like a massive amount of money. It's the difference between 2,600 a month and 4,200 a month. It's not like 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a coaching that, hey, maybe it's not the right time for you because we can't hope that all this is going to happen. But many people were holding on to the hope that it was going to come down to one and a half or two percent this year and three cuts and all the stuff that was said. Listen, Biden wants it to go down. He just can't because the unemployment numbers and inflation are out of control still. The, unemplo the unemployment came in way worse than they expected. Uh -huh inflation's still going up. All these things are still happening, right? So they can't lower rates while these things are going on. I personally think they're going to, this is again, me personally, I think they're going to go political uh, rate reduction just because we're moving into the election year. As we get into June or July or August, they're going to lower the rates. I don't care what the freaking unemployment is. It can be 29%. It won't matter. They're going to say, we're just going to stimulate the economy. I think that's going to happen, but I don't see them lowering them more than one time. I just don't, unless they try to milk it with a couple quarter percent rates and so on. So again, my crystal ball, which means nothing uh, because nobody has it, is I think they'll reduce the rates 50 basis points. We could look back on this in a month or two and see if I was accurate. I think they'll do that half a point reduction. They'll get it down below seven, which will inspire a little consumer confidence in the housing market inspire sales 
create jobs. All these things happen when we have more house sales, right? The builder confidence is off. The new construction confidence is off. Commercial space confidence, all that, all the indicators are pointing the wrong direction for rate reductions. And then the economy is not pointing the right direction for rate reductions, right? The good thing is the economy is getting worse. Unemployment's growing, which is good for rates, right? They go this way. So if unemployment goes lower, rates stay higher. If unemployment goes up, seasonally adjusted, everything else, rates are going to come down to offset that as we start getting more people unemployed. So they, they kind of go counterbalance each other a little bit in this equation. So all those numbers are trending. Unemployment's continuing up. Inflation's stubborn. It's staying there. They're not getting it down to round two where they wanted it. Right, it's not as bad as it was, but everybody knows gas prices are still high. All these things are still contributing. So again, mathematically, I don't see there's a rate on the table with what's going on until it changes, but I believe they'll do it even, uh, even so. I think they'll do it this year in election year. Here we are moving into you know elections in the next four months. So we'll see, I hope I'm wrong but I'm probably right in this particular case from watching this for 20 years. Right. But so back to your, back to your conversation with the buyers is I would really talk about what they're trying to do. Now, if they're waiting, if they can't afford it, that's one thing. If they're waiting for them to come down by, by one and a half points that there's nothing indicating that will happen. So they could risk it. It's a gamble, but is the gamble worth it? Cause it might be, four or 500 bucks a month, and they're willing to risk that. But if you look at $400 a month annually, that's five grand, you know, going rounding up five grand a year for, for three years, it's 15 grand. So that's 15,000 lost if they, if they get a higher rate as opposed to what they thought, but the houses are still appreciating crazy. The, uh, we're, we're not having any depreciation right now in assets in the residential sector. Everything's still appreciating by three and four and five and six percent. I mean, there's five and six percent appreciation in some markets. Yep. My, my thought on it is that if they bought now, let's say they did pay that extra 15 grand, A, they get to live where they want to live and own a home. B, if it goes down, the rates go down, they can refinance and most likely the prices will go up if that if, it, if the rates go down and then they will have bought at a lower price and right. can get their rate later. And then C. The one nobody talks about is if things get worse financially, inflation turns and goes up, the rates could go to nine. You yeah, know, I don't think that's going to happen, but now they've got a, a loan locked in at 7% instead of nine, in which case they win. So it's like, I, I just don't see why they don't would, would not move on. I don't see the downside because prices are certainly not coming down, clearly. I totally agree. I, I just, I, I still like going to the emotional side of why they're doing it to lay mm -hmm. that out, right? But here's what I would do, and this is what I'm still doing. Like, if I look at the rates are right now at seven, and it's costing me like a thousand a month, and I think it's going to be two years before they come down. It's twenty five grand, no matter what. I just think that's going to happen in my situation. Mm -hmm. I'm offering twenty five grand on a house until I find the house that will accept it. Right? I might have to give up a little bit here and there, but I'm going to get my number that I need to feel good about it. If it doesn't have a pool, I might be offering 50,000 less on them because they don't have a pool in Arizona. I mandatorily want a pool, right? Depends on the market. If you're in that Arizona market with 80 homes that, in the market at 150, that, sure. But in this market here, they're just- That's what I'm saying. Off. It has totally to do with the market. Yeah. Right? It won't work in, in Reading. It won't work in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to bite the bullet. That gets back to the, are you willing to wait? And what's the pain of waiting, right? But again, we're still seeing- really strong appreciation. We can't be reckless and say, I guarantee, I had an agent two weeks ago tell me, I guarantee this house will be worth 50 or $100,000 more in 24 months. That's not a good idea to say that. I go, that's that's reckless to even say that. I go, I'm just telling you, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but that's reckless. Because you don't have a crystal ball and I'm telling you, it's a very wonky time right now to be making that statement, mm -hmm. right? Well, I love it guys and ladies. Thank you for being here. Um, I, I appreciate it. We'll be here every week at 12. We'll talk about a little structure and change just to add a little more flavor to it. But I support you. I'm here for it and I love it. Randy, one comment before we yeah. go. Can you take the recording off for a second? Yep.